Last time when we left off with this problem, we had a player on a merry-go-round. Here's the player. And the player was facing in this direction. We'll call his view vector v hat. And the player was rotating around this merry-go-round like this. Now if the player stands in one place and doesn't move and continues and like doesn't doesn't look around or anything, when he gets to this point in the merry-go-round, he's going to be rotated, so he is going to be now looking this way. I'll call that v hat prime, but what we had actually happening was that the player's view vector was not changed at all. And so it continued looking in the same direction, v hat. So what we have to do is, is get this player's view vector to transform, to rotate with the merry-go-round if the player is standing on the merry-go-round. And the way we approached this was we took uh, we, we made local and global transforms for the player. So the player had a local transform, L, and we multiplied it by the global transform. This is the player right here. And we multiplied it by the global transform of the merry-go-round, which was M. And we got the new global transform of the character, the, the character's global transform. And that worked great for us. So let's do the same thing with the vector. The vector. Let's assume that the vector is in local space. We, we know how to transform vector into local space. So we'll put this vector local space right here, v hat, and we'll multiply it by m. And what do we get? Well, let's drill down into this matrix. This m is a TR matrix, a translation rotation matrix. So I'm just going to write it out expand it. And the top three, and the top three by three here, you are going to have the basis vectors for the forward and right and up vectors. Forward, forward, up and right. The, the middle, the, the y coordinate is our up vector. So forward, up and right. Down here we had zeros. And so this was, this was the three by three rotation matrix R. And then on the right, we had the translation, translation X, translation Y, translation Z. And down here, we had a one. So now let's go ahead and multiply this by our view vector, which was VX, VY, and VZ. And then if you remember, we just put a one down here uh, when we were learning about that earlier. So let's see what we get. We get Vx times the forward vector, Vy times the up vector, Vz times the right vector, and then 1 times the translation, except wait a minute. Wait a minute. We don't want to translate this matrix. When, when you're going around the merry-go-round, your view matrix is not changing in length. And if we translate the view matrix, the view vector, then our view vector will change in length, but we want it to always be, we want it to always have a hat. We want it to always be unit length. So we don't want these translations. So actually, let's change this to zero. Zero. If we change this to zero, then it'll be Vx times forward, Vy times up, and Vz times right, but then zero times Tx. Zero times Tx, which is what we want. We do not want the translation part of this matrix. And so our view vector will be only rotated, only rotated to here, but not transformed. So what did we just do? Why are we allowed to do this changing zero to one like magic? Well, what we just did is called, has a name, it's called homogeneous coordinates. Homogeneous coordinates, or you may also hear this pronounced homogeneous coordinates, but I like homogeneous better. So I'm going to say it that way. So the homogeneous coordinate is if you have a three-dimensional vector, you tack on an additional w. w is your homogeneous coordinates. Why w? I don't know. We ran out of letters. Z is the last one, so we go back to w. So there, there, we're going to focus on two types of homogeneous coordinates right now. We have the value 1, which we were using up until this video, and that's for if you have a 
position vector, position vector. And then you have the value zero, and you use that for if you have a direction vector. So you really have two types of vectors, position vector and direction vector. A position vector, for example, would be if this, if these are the, uh, if this is the origin of our coordinate system here, a position vector would describe where an object is in the world. This is the position vector for the character. This is the position vector for the merry-go-round. This is the position vector for the new location of the character. Whereas a direction vector doesn't start at the origin. It starts at an object and describes where that character is looking. So this guy right here, this v hat, it's very common to see a direction vector be unit length. v hat is the direction vector of the character. So if you're multiplying a position vector by a matrix, you want to have this w be 1. And if you're multiplying a direction vector, you want to have the w be 0. So now that we've learned all that, uh, oh, and the zero, the zero, mind you, the zero is because with a direction vector, we do not want the translation part of our, of, our, of our transformation. So knowing this, keeping this in mind, we have to go back to our matrix library and create a new way of, of multiplying a vector by a matrix that keeps this position or direction stuff in mind. So what we're going to do is uh, that. So here's our transform direction vector function. And really, it's going to be very similar to our transform. I'm going to use the, the default multiplication operator overload to be the, the position vector, because most of the time you're translating position vectors. But for when you want to translate a direction vector, it's very similar, except these last terms here on the right, those are the translation terms. You can see they're not multiplied by vx, vy, or vz. They're just multiplied by 1. And so I'm just going to remove those, take them out, because now they're going to be multiplied by 0. And we return the result. That's really all there is to that transform direction function. So now we have to do the picking up where we left off before we uh, had to take a detour to solve this problem we have to transform the view into the local space of the merry-go-round. So how do we do that? Let's see, take the, the, parent, the parent inverse. So I have a handy function right here that does that for us. Handy variable where I've already done it. But instead of saying times, no. We're now going to say transform direction and then pass in the vector version of the view angles. That's it. If we use if we use the regular multiplication, then we're going to get the translation part in there too. And that would be bad. We only want the direction part so that we can remain a unit vector. So that should do it. Let's build it and run it and see it and play it. So here's our merry-go-round. And if I step on the merry-go-round, there we go. Like magic, our view is now being transformed uh, just like the, the movement, just like the position is. Great. So I think we have maybe one or two more videos in this advanced matrices series. Uh, and we're working, finally, we're, we're working, now that we have homogeneous coordinates, we're working towards perspec uh, perspective, perspe introspection matrices? No, that's not right. Uh, yeah, matrices of some kind. <laughs>